through some of their ideas from that 800 billion deficit. I don't know, Anjiro or, or uh, Rafael, if you have any other ways, but let's now listen in. That highlights the budget policies and the revenue raising measures for the financial year 2022 2023. The presentation of this statement is in fulfillment of the requirements of Section 40 of the Public Finance Management Act and the Standing Order Number 241 of the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, our partner states in the East African community have agreed that Kenya can proceed with the early presentation of the budget statement this month. This aligns the budget calendar with the timelines for the general elections scheduled for August 2022. Mr. Speaker, His Excellency the President on Raburu Kenyatta took office in 2013. At that time, the country had just completed implementation of the first medium term plan of the Kenya Vision 2030 and was on the third year of implementation of the 2010 Constitution. During the first five years, his administration designed and implemented an economic transformation agenda under the second medium term plan of Vision 2030. The agenda focused on key, five key pillars. One, improving the business climate by maintaining microeconomic stability, addressing security challenges, and reducing the costs of doing business. Two, closing the infrastructure gaps, Three, promoting investment in key sectors such as manufacturing, agriculture, and tourism. Four, sharing prosperity by investing in pro poor programs in health, education, and social welfare. And five, fostering the devolved system of government to enhance service delivery. Building on the progress made under the economic transformation agenda, the government initiated the Big Four agenda anchored on the third medium term plan or the Vision 2013. The government focused on transforming the lives of Kenyans through strategic interventions on food and nutritional security, affordable housing, manufacturing for job creation, and universal health coverage. Mr. Speaker, while we celebrate the remarkable achievements from the past investments in the priority programs under the economic transformation agenda, uh, agenda and the Big Four, the country continues to grapple with various social, economic, and environmental challenges. In preparing this year's budget, we extensively consulted Kenyans. The insights, comments, and suggestions have informed the priorities laid in this budget. Key among the concerns, one, the high cost of living, two, high level of unemployment among the youth, three, income inequality, and four, public debt burden. Mr. Speaker, we have noted that most of the concerns raised by Kenyans were associated with the negative effects of COVID-19 pandemic. In response, the government developed and implemented appropriate economic policies and rolled out targeted programs that cushioned the citizens and businesses from the adverse effect of the pandemic. Building on the progress realized, we have outlined policies in this budget that are geared towards returning the economy back on a more sustainable growth path for improved livelihoods. In pursuit of this, we have therefore chosen this year's uh, budget theme as accelerating economic recovery for, livelihood, for improved livelihoods. The government will implement economic policies and undertake structural reforms geared towards improving the welfare of Kenyans. This includes aligning and accelerating implementation of the Big Four Agenda and the third ec economic stimulus program for sustainable growth. Mr. Speaker, conscious of the constrained fiscal space, we intend to implement these policy measures within a sustainable fiscal framework. Indeed, we have moderated our spending levels targets and ensure cautious revenue projections. We have re reprioritized public spending towards pro poor expenditures in health, education, and supporting the vulnerable segments of the population. In addition, we are leveraging on the public-private partnership to fund uh, projects, support the private sector, and narrow fiscal deficit. Mr. Speaker, the next section of my statement will give highlights of the economic policy context, policy priorities of the government, and the strategy for accelerated economic recovery. I will later provide highlights for the fiscal framework underpinning this budget, spending priorities, and the proposed tax policy measures. Mr. Speaker, this year's budget has been prepared against a backdrop of a moderate global growth of 4.4% from a recovery of 5.9% in 2021. The global economy contracted by 3.1% in 2020 following the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. However, there are risks to this growth outlook, largely from possible emergence of COVID-19 pandemic 
and the ongoing conflict in Eastern Europe. Mr. Speaker, Kenya's economy demonstrated remarkable resilience to the COVID-19 shock in 2020 and staged a strong recovery in 2021. Following the easing of the COVID-19 restrictions, reopening of the economy, as well as targeted stimulus intervention by government, the economy registered a strong recovery of 9.9% in the third quarter of 2021. Overall, the economy is estimated to have expanded by 7.6% in 2021 a much stronger level from contraction of 0.3% in 2020. In 2022, the economy is projected to stabilize at 6%, supported by recovery in agriculture, industry, and service sectors. Mr. Speaker, to further strengthen this growth outlook, the government will continue to safeguard microeconomic stability by ensuring inflation remains within the government target range, while interest rate remains stable to support growth in private se uh, sector credit. The foreign exchange market is largely expected to remain stable, with foreign exchange reserves providing buffers against shocks in the foreign exchange markets. The current account deficit is projected at 5.9% of GDP in 2022, supported by a rebound in horticulture and tea exports, as well as increased inflows of remittances. Mr. Speaker, the economic outlook may be affected by emerging domestic and external risk. On the domestic front, Reemergence of COVID-19 variant and possible adverse weather condition could reverse the projected economic recovery. On the external front, the ongoing conflict in Eastern Europe has created uncertainties that will affect the global economic outlook through disruptions of supply chains, rising global oil prices, and increased infl inflationary uh, pressures. Mr. Speaker, the government will monitor all the domestic and external risk and take appro appropriate policy actions to cushion the economy and Kenyans in the event the risk materializes. Mr. Speaker, in 2017, the government has progressively implemented policies and programs under the Big Four agenda to foster socioeconomic development. However, the COVID-19 pandemic slowed down the implementation and full realization of the expected benefits. Mr. Speaker, to further accelerate economic recovery and improve livelihoods, the government will continue to implement and expand the economic recovery program in this budget. The program is hinged on a sound macroeconomic policy framework that aims to, one, enhance security for our citizens and their properties while fostering a secure and conducive business environment. Two, scale up development of critical infrastructure in roads, rail, energy, and water sectors. This will ease movements of people and goods, reduce the cost of doing business, enhance access to social amenities, and promote Kenya's competitiveness. Three, enhance transformation of key economic sectors for broad-based sustainable recovery by promoting agricultural productivity, growth in manufacturing, environmental conservation and water supply, support tourism recovery, and ensure sustainable land use and management. Four, expand access to quality services in health, education, and appropriate social safety nets for the vulnerable population. Five, support the youth, women, and persons living with disabilities through government-funded empowerment programs. Six, continue supporting the evolved system of government through active engagements, policy guidance, and timely transfers of shareable revenues. This will indeed strengthen county government systems and enhance quality service delivery. And lastly, sustain implementation of various reforms targeted at enhancing efficiency in the delivery of public services. Mr. Speaker, the implementation of the economic recovery program that's also supported by the International Monetary Fund is fully on track. The IMF program has four key objectives. First, scaling up the COVID-19 response by supporting health and other sectors most impacted by the pandemic. Second, reducing debt vulnerabilities by pursuing a revenue-driven fiscal consolidation plan that targets to stabilize debt to GDP ratio and subsequently put it on a downward level. Third, supporting the structural and governance reforms while addressing weaknesses in state-owned enterprises with a view to enhancing efficiency in the management of economic and fiscal affairs. And fourth, implementing specific measures to strengthen the monetary policy framework and support financial stability. Mr. Speaker, alongside the formation, the government has continued with the implementation of various stimulus programs to manage COVID-19 pandemic, support businesses, and general employment in order to minimize 
the adverse socioeconomic impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Speaker, in the financial year 2021-2022, the third phase of the economic stimulus program and the, and the implementation targeted, one, the Kazi Mutani program to create employment for over 200,000 youth across the country. Two, preparation of the, of the education sector for the transition into the competency-based curriculum by considering new classrooms to accommodate more than one million people expected to join junior secondary schools in January 2023. Three, construction of additional 50 new level three hospitals in uncovered and densely populated areas across the country to enhance access to the medical services. Four, supporting livelihoods of farmers within the sugar belt, provision of fertilizer subsidy to small scale tea farmers, and completion of the ongoing intervention in the COVID subsector. And five, supporting communities in arid and semi arid regions of the country. Mr. Speaker, in this statement, I'll be proposing additional allocation to various activities under the economic stimulus program to further support livelihoods and stimulate economic activities. Mr. Speaker, in this budget, the government will strive to enhance the role of the private sector in the economy, including financing infrastructure projects through the public-private partnership, support micro, small, and medium enterprises by facil facilitating access to finance, invest in ICT and digital infrastructure to support the use of digital platform to facilitate e-commerce and efficient delivery of public services, promote and strengthen local and foreign resource mobilization efforts to sustain funding of the identified development projects and programs, improve social protection through targeted policy interventions and programs, to promote local production processes and domestic supply value chains, and, and lastly, strengthen the monitoring and evaluation system for quality outcomes of the projects. Mr. Speaker, implementation of the socioeconomic policies and structural reforms have seen Kenya graduate from a low income to a middle income country with an estimated per capita income of Kenya shilling 244,000 in 2021. This is a significant leap of 92.1 percent from the level of Kenya shilling 127,000 in 2013. Our vision is to achieve the upper middle income status by 2030 with a minimum per capita income of at least Kenya shilling 453,000. Mr. Speaker, looking back since 2013, when the current government took reign of power, Kenya has achieved monumental milestones, especially at the macroeconomic level. For instance, the economy has grown by 155% from the value of Kenya shilling 5.3 trillion in 2013 to Kenya shilling 13.5 trillion in 2022. Two, a strong economic growth averaging 4.6% has been realized over the period, including impressive recovery of 7.6% in 2021 from a contraction of 0.3% in 2020, occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. Third, cumulatively 5.1 million new jobs in both formal and informal sectors were created. Fourthly, the economy has maintained microeconomic stability with inflation rate within target and interest rates remaining stable. The average annual inflation rate declined from 7.2% in 2013 to 5.7% in 2021. Fifthly, the commercial bank lending to the private sector doubled from Kenya shilling 1.5 trillion to Kenya shilling 3.1 trillion in 2021. Sixth, sixth, successfully lengthened the average time to maturity for treasury bonds from 7.4 years in June 2013 to nine years in March 2022. This has improved the maturity of profile of domestic debt and supported refinancing risk mitigation. Seventh, the foreign exchange market has remained stable with the official foreign exchange reserves increasing from US dollar 6.5 billion or 4.4 months of import cover to US dollar 9.5 billion or 5.6 months of import cover in 2021. The current account deficit improved by dropping from 7.7% .7 of GDP in 2013 to 4.9 percent of GDP in 2021, effectively supporting the stability of the foreign exchange market. Annual diaspora remittance grew by close to 300 percent from Kenya shilling 112 billion in 2013 to the current Kenya shilling 436 billion in 2022. Foreign direct investment rose from Kenya shilling 56.7 trillion in 2013 
to Kenya shilling 75.1 trillion in 2007. Ordinary revenue collection has more than doubled from Kenya shilling 0 0.8 trillion in the financial year 2012-2013 to Kenya shilling 1.8 trillion in the financial year 2020-2021 and further to Kenya shilling 2 trillion in the financial year 2021-2022. The poverty prevalence rate declined from 36.1% in 2013 to 33.6% in 2019. Mr. Speaker, the ongoing police reforms aimed at protecting lives and enhancing general security of the citizens have significantly improved the ratio of police to citizen, from one policeman to 1,000 citizens in 2012 to the current one policeman to 462 citizens. With regard to the infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, the government has constructed an additional 10,500 kilometers of tarmac roads spread across the 47 counties, facilitating efficient movement of people and goods, thereby rapidly stimulating economic activities. Mr. Speaker, the completion of the standard gauge railway has not only eased movement of passengers during the period, but also led to the transportation of over 17.6 million tons of cargo between 2018 and 2021. During this period, over 6.5 6 million passengers have used the standard gauge railway. This has had positive effects on the economy, including creation of jobs. Mr. Speaker, within the same period, the government tripled power generation from 1,300 megawatts to the current 3,900 megawatts. Of these, 73% is from green source, thus consolidating Kenya's leading generation of green energy in Africa. This has significantly increased the number of households connected to electricity to more than 8.3 million today compared to 2.3 million in 2013. Mr. Speaker, the international oil prices have been rap rapidly rising for close to a year without any sign of easing. Conscious of the adverse impact of the high oil prices on all sectors of the economy, the government has taken deliberate steps to subsidize palm prices through the Petroleum uh, Development Levy Fund. This action has stabilized palm prices and consequently prices of goods and services. The government remains committed to provide adequate resources to mitigate the rising cost of fuel. Mr. Speaker, in its pursuit to increase productivity while staying on the economic transformation trajectory, the government has sustained the pace of investment in all sectors. The agricultural sector remains the largest contributor to our GDP and priority under the Big Four agenda on food and nutrition security. The government has continued to support large-scale production of staple food, expanded irrigation schemes, increase access to agricultural inputs, and support smallholder farmers to sustainably produce and market various commodities. In addition, the government introduced the warehouse receipt system to reduce post-harvest losses. Mr. Speaker, the price of fertilizer has more than doubled in the last one year, and is still rising. To safeguard food security in the country, the government has allocated Kenya shilling three, three billion to subsidize farmers during the current planting season. We propose to allocate a further Kenya shilling 2.7 billion in the financial 2022-2023 to cushion the farmers while sustaining food production. Mr. Speaker, to strengthen land and property ownership, the government has issued over 5.3 million title deeds over the last eight years. The government has also fully digitized land records in Nairobi registry under the National Land Information Management System, referred to RDSASA program to improve accessibility of land records and lowering the cost of land transaction. Mr. Speaker, Kenya's emergent oceans and blue economy will remain a key growth engine for the country. In the last five years, the country has heavily invested in measures to expand marine fisheries, grow marine transport and logistics, and establishing Kenya as a source of quality and cost-effective labor. These measures have resulted in ongoing, in the opening of the Lamo port reopening of the port of Kisumu, establishment of the nascent shipyards at the port of Mombasa and Kisumu, revival of the Kenya National Shipping Line, construction of an ultra-modern tuna fish hub at Liwatoni in Mombasa, among others. Mr. Speaker, with the proposed interventions, the sector is on course to be among the top five key contributors to the Kenyan economy, and a game changer in enhancement of the socioeconomic fortune of the Kenyans living next to our marine resources. Mr. Speaker, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the government's strategy to revive the tourism sector has yielded positive results. The earnings from the sector had increased by 74% from Kenya shilling 94 billion in 2013 
to Kenya shilling 163.6 billion in 2019. Tourist arrivals had also increased from 1.5 million to 2 million during the same period. In 2020, these numbers, numbers significantly declined due to the adverse effects of COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Speaker, in the health sector, hospital bed capacity increased from 56,069 in 2013 to 82,291 in 2020. These increases are attributed to over 1,912 new hospitals constructed across the country by the national county government. Further, the introduction of free maternity maternal health care program dubbed Linda Mama initiated in 2016 has led to the decline of maternal mortality rate by 26 percent. This program alongside the Beyond Zero campaign led by the First Lady has significantly contributed to the improvement of maternal health care in the country. Mr. Speaker, to address the growing cancer burden over the last decade, the government has formulated appropriate policies and allocated sufficient resources to guide the delivery of cancer testing and treatment services. Some of these interventions include, one, establishment of the National Cancer Institute as an overall coordinating agency. Two, construction and equipment of comprehensive cancer centers at Kenyatta National Hospital in Mombasa, Nakuru, and Garissa counties. And three, support to 10 county referral hospitals to operationalize chemotherapy clinics. Mr. Speaker, to address the quality of education in the country, the government has rolled out radical reforms in the sector that have significantly improved the quality of education in the country. For instance, the investment in the sector has seen the number of primary schools increase from 26,549 to 32,437, and secondary schools from 7,174 to 10,413 between 2012 and 2020. The number of technical and vocational education training institutions also increased from 701 to 2,301 during the same period. As a measure of unprecedented success, transition rate from the primary and secondary schools moved from 64.5% in 2012 to the current 100%. In addition, under the radical competence-based curriculum, the plan for the first group to join junior secondary schools in January 2013 is well on course. Mr. Speaker, following the sustained investment in human capital development, Kenya was impressively ranked position three in sub-Saharan African region with a human capital index of 0 0.55 in the year 2020. Mr. Speaker, from 2013 to 2021, the government disbursed Kenya shilling 151.6 billion through the Inua Jamii program support of 1.2 million vulnerable persons among them orphans, the elderly, and persons living with severe disabilities. Further, the government disbursed Kenya shilling 6.95 6 billion to support women, youth, and persons with disability and disabilities enterprises through 74,021 groups under the Ways of Fund. Mr. Speaker, to improve efficiency in the delivery of government services, the government initiated and operationalized 52 Uduma centers across the country. In 2014, the government launched the e-citizen platform where 350 government services have now been successfully migrated. The platform has since served over 27.2 million customers while raising Kenya shilling 87.1 billion in revenue for the government. Mr. Speaker, in 2013, the government successfully rolled out implementation of the 2010 constitution. The 47 county government, independent commissions, and other institutions established by the constitution were duly operationalized, albeit with huge financial requirement, thereby straining the, the country's fiscal position. Mr. Speaker, to build on the milestones achieved so far, we'll be implementing the following policy, legal, and institutional reforms to improve the business environment, increase efficiency in public service delivery, and strengthen transparency and accountability in public finance management. Mr. Speaker, the government has, has continued to implement various reforms the procurement to improve efficiency and transparency, enhance good governance, and promote savings in the procurement uh, process. Among the reforms is the procurement of an end-to-end e-government procurement system, whose pilot phase will commence in July 2022, with a target date for full rollout to all ministries, departments, and agencies in January 2023. Mr. Speaker, on framework contracting, 
we have submitted to this House for enactment the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Bill 2021. This bill provides for multiple awards where several bidders can be awarded the same contract. Once, it, once enacted, it will hasten the delivery of services to citizenry and support local farms, particularly in specialized areas like pharmaceuticals, supply of foodstuffs, and commodity markets. Mr. Speaker, further, we have put together a framework that harmonizes the qualification for supply chain management personnel that clarifies competencies for the various cadres in the supply chain management function. In this respect, I direct all procuring entities to adhere to the requirement of this framework. Mr. Speaker, the government commitment to empowering SMEs owned by women, youth, and persons with disabilities under the Access to Government Procurement Opportunities Program remains firmly on course. In this respect, National Treasury has re-engineered the AGBO portal to enable real-time registration and monitoring. The system has further been linked to other government institutions to facilitate faster verification and reporting. Mr. Speaker, we have undertaken a comprehensive assessment of vulnerabilities in state-owned enterprises. In particular, the in-depth financial evaluations of selected state-owned enterprises, excluding Kenya Airways, that face the largest financial and fiscal risk, revealed a cumulative liquidity gap of canceling 383 billion over the next five years. This gap is expected to be covered by undertaking specific policy interventions to improve, to improve efficiencies, reduce costs, and increase revenue. Mr. Speaker, in order to enhance the operational and financial efficiency of state-owned enterprises, we shall first implement the blueprint on governance reforms, on enforcement and separation of roles and responsibilities among institutions that exercise oversight. Second, fast track the implementation of government investment management information system and capture, among others, all loan advance to the enterprises. Third, extend the coverage of financial evaluations to other state-owned enterprises to be able to anticipate, quantify, monitor, manage, and mitigate fiscal risk from the state corporations. Mr. Speaker, Kenya always plays a major and catalytic role in the economic development of this country. The airline is facing severe cash flow constraints following the global lockdowns triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic. The government has a major shareholder supporting the restructuring of Kenya Airways to adapt to the challenges facing the aviation industry due to the adverse impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Kenya Airways will be required to trim its network, operationalize frequencies of, rationalize frequencies of flights, operate a smaller fleet, and rationalize its staff complement. I'll be proposing a budget allocation to meet the restructuring costs. Mr. Speaker, the government will continue to support the power and lightning company to increase its efficiency while sustaining systematic reduction in tariff to electricity users. The recent 15% tariff reduction by the government has not only brought immediate relief to the consumers, but also led to the realization of broad benefits, including reductions of prices of goods by manufacturers. Mr. Speaker, the Kenyan banking sector is stable and has shown great resilience with strong capital and liquidity buffers built on reforms initiated by the Central Bank of Kenya. A clear demonstration of resilience and recovery of the banking sector from the adverse effects of COVID-19 pandemic was strong capital adequacy and liquidity ratios. As at end of December 2021, capital adequacy ratio was 19.6%, which was above the minimum requirement of 14.5%, while liquidity ratio was 56.2%, which is also above the 20% requirement. The sector has continued with this transformation journey under the Kenya Banking Sector Charter issued in 2019 by the Central Bank of Kenya. The charter focuses on strengthening risk-based credit pricing, entrenching customer centricity in the operations, and ensuring ethical culture in the banks. In addition, the Central Bank of Kenya Act 2021 was enacted to provide the Central Bank with powers to license and oversight the previously unregulated digital credit providers. Mr. Speaker, commercial banks face climate-related risk in their operations. In this regard, the CBK issued a detailed guidelines on climate-related risk management to all commercial banks in 2021, in October 2021. The banks are now required to integrate climate-related risk into the operation overall risk management framework. Mr. Speaker, 
The Fin Access Survey 2021 conducted in, in the 47 counties revealed that access to formal financial services improved from 82.9% in 2019 to 83.7% in 2021. The increase of 0.8% access through the formal channels was attributed to the progress made by Kenya to expand financial access through various channels, including mobile money financial platforms. Access through the informal uh, channels, on the other hand, reduced from 6.1% to 4.7%, while the excluded population increased slightly from 11% to 11.6% during the same period. Mr. Speaker, over the last 15 years, an elaborate financial service ecosystem in Kenya has evolved from an initial basic money transfer innovation. In this period, access to financial services has increased from 26% of adults in 2006 to the current 83%. Further, the government has rolled out mobile money, strengthened real-time growth settlement system, and established a regional payment system at both the East African community and Comesa region. In order to strengthen the national payment system, Mr. Speaker, the Central Bank of Kenya in February 2022 launched the National Payment Strategy 2022-2025, which seeks to realize a faster, secure, efficient, and collaborative payment system that supports financial inclusion and innovation, while reinforcing the emergence of 24-hour economy. Mr. Speaker, in order to attract increased financing and investment in Kenya, the Nairobi International Financial System Authority has put in place the required operating framework and regulations. With the necessary framework now in place and the official openings later, later in the year, NIFCA will be expected to be a key catalyst in supporting the economic growth. Mr. Speaker, the Kenya Mogai Refinance Company continues to play a leading role in the delivery of affordable housing in Kenya. I am pleased to know that since September 2020, KMRC has disbursed over $2 billion to seven primary mortgage lenders and is currently processing an additional seven billion. To provide a sustainable source of funding and to complement the existing credit lines, the company whose bond was recently listed at the Nairobi Security Exchange successfully issued its first corporate bond of Kenya Shilling 1.4 billion under the medium term note program of Kenya Shilling 10.5 billion. Mr. Speaker, since the launch of the credit guarantee scheme in December 2020, Total loans ex extended to micro, small, and medium enterprises under this scheme had surpassed Kenya shilling 2.2 billion by December 2021. This has expanded access to affordable credit to micro, small, and medium enterprises to 45 counties across 11 different sectors of the economy. To enhance coverage of the scheme, additional participating financial intermediaries will be brought on board. Further, the government will seek support of development partners to increase the scheme's capital from the current Kenya shilling 4 billion to Kenya shilling 10 billion over the medium term. Mr. Speaker, to deepen capital markets, the government is undertaking a review of the legal and regulatory framework to address emerging issues in the capital market space. These include, among others, aspects on collective investment schemes and investment uh, based crowd, uh, crowdfunding. In addition, the government is installing a new central security de de uh, depository system at the Central Bank of Kenya to support plan reforms in the sec secondary trading of government bonds. Mr. Speaker, to enable more investment advisors offer investment advisory services, I propose to amend the Capital Markets Act to expand the spectrum of persons who can act as investment advisors. This will allow single director companies and partnerships to be licensed as investment advisors. Mr. Speaker, the payroll of the public service pension continues to grow and had more than 300,000 pensioners and dependents as of December 2021. The National Treasury will roll out the much awaited re engineered pension management system in the course of the financial year. The system will offer an end to end enterprise resource planning solution in the management and processing of pension benefits. Mr. Speaker, the public service operation scheme that was operationalized in January 2021 has attracted more than 352,000 members with a current fund value of Kenya shilling 27 billion. The scheme is eventually expected to ease pressure on the pension wage, wage bill while guaranteeing sustainability of public service uh, pension. Mr. Speaker, 
To further improve the pension policy framework, the National Treasury is developing an overarching national pension policy that sets the guiding principles for application across board on structuring and management of retirement benefits for public servants. In order to widen the scope of investment, where pension schemes can invest their funds, Mr. Speaker, I propose to amend the Retirement Benefits Investment Guidelines to include the unlisted real estate investment trusts incorporated in Kenya that are approved by the Capital Markets Authority. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, the much-awaited government-backed pension scheme for, in for informal sector workers, Kenya National Entrepreneur Saving Trust, KENNEST, targeting 15 million marginalized informal sector workers has now been registered. To operationalize the scheme, the government is restructuring the M. Makiba bond platform for safe and secure investment for the unique, heterogeneous informal workers. To this effect, the National Treasury is working with stakeholders in the financial sector to roll out the scheme across the 47 counties in the course of this financial year. Mr. Speaker, in the recent times, motorcycles and three-wheelers have increasingly been engaged in commercial fare-paying passengers' business. Unfortunately, the number of accidents in this category of business have been on a steady rise, yet the owners of motorcycles do not have insurance cover to cater for any treatment in case of injuries or compensation in case of death or any other damages caused by an accident involving motorcycles. In this respect, I propose to amend the insurance regulations to require motorcycles and three-wheelers used by fare-paying passengers to take insurance for their passengers. Mr. Speaker, in an effort to strengthen disaster risk management in the country, the government will fast track the enactment of the disaster risk management policy and bill, finalize the disaster risk management strategy, and update, uh, update the disaster risk financing strategy. In addition, the National Treasury will expedite the finalization of public finance management uh, regulation 2022. Mr. Speaker, in order to demonstrate our commitment in addressing climate change, the government will implement the financing locally led climate action program, a 10 year financing program aimed at mobilizing climate finances to support local communities build their resilience and adapt to the impacts of climate change in four seven counties. In the financial year 2022-23, I propose to allocate Kenya shilling 6.1 billion to this program. Mr. Speaker, in addition, the government has finalized the long-term low emission strategy to guide a low carbon climate resilient development path. To address the financing challenge of climate change actions, the government will develop a climate finance mobilization strategy. Further, in order to promote private sector investments in green projects and programs, the government will fast track the finalization of the national policy framework on green fiscal incentives and development of the carbon mechanism design. In the forestry sector, the government is committed to expand the country's tree cover from the current 7.2% to the 10% target. The government is revitalizing efforts to meet this important target through resource mobilization with partners and engagement with the counties to dedicate more areas and resources under the forestry regimes, as well as tackling the catchment de degradation that has contributed to the rising lakes phenomenon. In this regard, I propose to allocate Kenya shilling 10.2 billion to support conservation of forests and water towers. Mr. Speaker, in order to encourage reporting and recovery of identified assets by the unclaimed financial assets authority, I propose to amend the unclaimed finance assets act to provide for waiver of penalties, fines, and audit fees in justifiable circumstances, as well as to cap accumulation of penalties and interest to the value of, of the assets. I also propose a 12 month voluntary disclosure program to grant relief or penalties on the unclaimed financial assets declared and delivered in the next 12 months under the program. Mr. Speaker, Article 173 of our Constitution established a judiciary fund, which will be administered by the Chief Registrar in meeting the administrative expenses of the judiciary. In this respect, the necessary procedures for operationalization of the fund have been put in place. In particular, the following have so far been achieved. One, the Judiciary Fund Act and regulations have been enacted. Two, the bank accounts for the fund have been opened at the Central Bank of Kenya. Three, an appropriate budget for judiciary in the financial year 2022-2023 has been created. And four, 
If means has been enhanced to accommodate judiciary fund operation, this fund will be fully operational with effect from 1st July 2022. Mr. Speaker, the fiscal policy supporting the budget for the financial year 2022-23 and also the medium term is designed to accelerate economic recovery for improved livelihood for Kenyans. Mr. Speaker, as mentioned earlier, one of the objectives of our economic recovery program is to reduce the debt vulnerabilities by pursuing a revenue-driven fiscal consolidation. In this regard, the government has developed a draft national tax policy to guide tax administration that will soon be shared with stakeholders and peer review institutions for input. Further, the government is developing a medium-term revenue strategy to boost tax revenues, improve the tax system, and link taxation to our development needs over the medium term. Mr. Speaker, in addition, the government will continue to rationalize tax expenditures and retain those whose intention is to promote investment and ensure sustainability and value for money from our resources. In the, in the tax expenditure report 2021, we noted a significant decline in the level of tax expenditure from 5.17 percent of GDP in 2017 to 2.96 percent as a percentage of GDP in 2020. We shall continue to review the existing tax expenditure in order to boost the tax revenue. Mr. Speaker, we project total revenue collection including appropriation in aid and grant for the financial year 2022-2023 budget to be Kenya shilling 2.4 trillion, equivalent to 17.5 percent of GDP. Of this, ordinary revenue is projected as Kenya shilling 2.14 trillion, equivalent to 15.3 percent of GDP. On the other hand, Mr. Speaker, total expenditure in the financial year 2022-2023 is projected at, three, at Kenya shilling 3.3 trillion, equivalent to 23.9 percent of GDP. Recurrent expenditure will amount to Kenya shilling 2.2 trillion while development expenditure, including allocation to foreign finance projects, contingency fund, and conditional transfers to county government, is Kenya shilling 715.5 billion. The funding is expected to accelerate completion of ongoing infrastructure projects. The equitable share to counties projected at Kenya shilling 370 billion. Mr. Speaker, given the projected revenues and grants against the projected expenditure, the fiscal deficit is projected to decline to Kenya shilling 862.5 billion, equivalent to 6.2% of GDP in the financial year 2022-23, from Kenya shilling 1 trillion 24 billion, equivalent to 8.1% of GDP in the financial year 2021-2022. The fiscal deficit will be financed through net external financing of Kenya shilling 280 billion, equivalent to 2% of GDP and net domestic financing of Kenya shilling 581 billion, equivalent to 4.2% of GDP. Mr. Speaker, our medium-term fiscal consolidation policy targets to progressively reduce the level of fiscal deficit from Kenya shilling 862 billion, equivalent 6.2% of GDP in the financial year 2022-23, to Kenya shilling 634.1 billion, equivalent 3.2% of GDP in the financial year 2025-26. Mr. Speaker, Kenya has implemented reforms in public debt management to strengthen debt transparency and accountability. The depth, the depth of coverage and disclosures on public uh, debt information has been enhanced in line with the best practices. A broad range of information on public debt is readily available to the general public on the National Treasury website while an investor relations unit within the Public Debt Management Office facilitates investor, lender, and public engagements on public debt issues. Mr. Speaker, Kenya's debt carrying capacity is rated moderate, and the overall public debt is sustainable. We have initiated implementation of a, of a set of measures to lower cost and risk in the public debt portfolio. These measures include cancellation of some non-disbursing external loans, rearrangements of syndicated external loans, and increasing the issuance of treasury bonds to lengthen the maturity structure and improve debt sustainability indicators. The private debt financing are highly concessional loans offered at below market interest rates with long repayment period. 
recourse to commercial borrowing has been maintained at minimum levels. Mr. Speaker, the current legal numerical public debt ceiling has constrained public funding of projects while at the same time failing to consider the effects of external shocks on the economy. In this regard, we propose to replace the debt ceiling with a debt anchor and set it at 55% of debt to GDP in present value terms. This is in line with internationally accepted uh, conventional practice. Further, we provided an, a requirement that the Cabinet Secretary National Treasury reports to Parliament whenever the debt level swings beyond the threshold with time-bound remedial actions. This approach ensures that debt remains within sustainable levels and entrenches accountability and transparency in public debt management. I have forwarded to this August House the necessary changes to the PFM Max to align ourselves with this desired position and request that the House consider it favorably. Mr. Speaker, the public-private partnership program has gained traction and under the new PPP Act 2021 that has reduced the number of approval processes, introduced timelines and strengthened the institutional framework by elevating the PPP unit to a director of the National Treasury. So far, the government has achieved closure on a number of projects, of which a key one seeks to deliver over 400 over 4,000 housing units to frontline Kenya Defense Force personnel. Mr. Speaker, to ensure projects with the highest socioeconomic returns are selected and implemented, we are putting in place a joint public investment management and public-private partnership planning framework and strengthening the co coordination between the Public Debt Management Office and the Public-Private Partnership Directorate for effective control of fiscal exposure, as envisioned the new PPP Act 2021. Further, the government will fully operationalize the Public-Private Partnership Project Facilitation Fund to support activities of the PPP Directorate and those of the contracting authorities in preparation phase of a project during the tendering process and project uh, appraisal. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, in view of the limited fiscal space, the government will embark on rationalizing the existing portfolio of projects being implemented by the national government and issue regulations for managing public investment. The government has developed the Public Investment Management Information System, which is expected to be a rep repository of all projects implemented by the national and county governments. Mr. Speaker, let me now turn to the highlights of the government's pending priorities in the coming financial year. In light of the revenue challenges and significant expenditure demands, spending, spending in the financial 2022-2023 will focus on supporting economic recovery and the Big Four agenda to ensure the highest impact on the well-being of Kenyans. The proposed total program spending for the financial year 2022-2023 amounts to Kenya shilling 3.3 trillion. Mr. Speaker, as I mentioned earlier, the government is implementing the, implementing the third economic stimulus program of Kenya shilling 30.1 billion to accelerate the pace of economic growth and sustain the gains realized so far. To further enhance the ongoing interventions, I propose a total of Kenya shilling 20.6 billion in this budget support implementation of various activities. Mr. Speaker, out of this, Kenya shilling 2.1 billion is for the youth empowerment and employment creation under the Kazi Mutani program. Kenya shilling 8.2 billion for improving educational outcomes. Kenya shilling 1.3 billion for improving health outcomes. Kenya shilling 5.8 billion for improving environment, water and sanitation facilities. Kenya shilling 1.5 billion for fertilizer subsidy. And Kenya shilling 1.6 billion for enhancing liquidity to business. Mr. Speaker. To support implementation of the projects and programs under the Big Four agenda, I have proposed a total of Kenya shilling 146.8 billion. Mr. Speaker, we have continued to strengthen our healthcare systems in our quest for universal health coverage. Better health outcomes depend on the availability, accessibility, and capacity of health workers to deliver quality services anchored on well equipped and provision health care facilities. Towards this end, the government has implemented various initiatives 
laying ground for achieving the goal of 100% health insurance coverage. Key among these initiatives include the free maternity program Damli and Damama, which currently benefits over 1 million mothers annually, increasing the total number of health workers in the public and private sector, investment in the health infrastructure, and development of a digital health platform to support effective monitoring of the health uh, sector. In addition, the government enacted the NHIF Amendment Act, which provides for the establishment of a centralized healthcare provider management system to ensure efficient management and payment of claims, as well as data collection. Mr. Speaker, to further enhance realization of the universal health coverage, I propose to allocate Kenya shilling 146.8 billion to the healthcare sector to support the various programs aimed at improving healthcare outcomes. Of this amount, Kenya shilling 62.3 billion will fund activities and programs for the attainment of universal health coverage. Specific allocation for various activities and programs include Kenya shilling 7 billion for purchase of COVID vaccines and related expenditure, Kenya shilling 4.1 billion for free maternity health care, Kenya shilling 5.2 billion for the managed equipment services, as well as Kenya shilling 1.8 billion to provide medical cover for the elderly and severely disabled persons in our society. Mr. Speaker, to lower the cases of HIV AIDS, malaria and tuberculosis in the country, Kenya shilling 16.2 billion has been recommended for the purpose. To enhance vaccines and immunization program, I propose an allocation of Kenya shilling 5.2 billion. Mr. Speaker, to further improve health, health service delivery, Kenya shilling 18.1 billion has been proposed for the Kenyatta National Hospital, Kenya shilling 11.7 billion for the Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital, Kenya shilling 7.7 .7 billion for the Kenya Medical Training Center, Kenya shilling 2.9 billion for the Kenya Medical Research Institute, Kenya shilling 1.1 billion for the construction of Kenya National Hospital Bands and uh, Pediatric Center, Kenya shilling 1.2 billion for procurement of family planning and reproductive health care communities, Kenya shilling 300 million for procurement of cyber knife radiotherapy equipment, Kenya shilling 1.3 billion for the construction of cancer center at Kisi Level 5 Hospital, and Kenya shilling 619 million for the procurement of equipment at the National uh, Blood Transfusion Services. Mr. Speaker, in 2013, the government embarked on a plan to provide decent and affordable houses for Kenyans. This was envisaged to create additional jobs, provide market for manufacturers as well as suppliers, and raise the contribution of real estate and construction sector to GDP. To achieve this, government has been implementing policy and administrative reforms targeted at lowering the cost of construction and improving access to finance for affordable housing. The government has also mobilized resources to support construction of affordable housing units and social housing units. Building on the gains and to ensure success of this initiative, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya shilling to 27.7 billion for the affordable housing program. The proposed allocation includes Kenya shilling 4.6 billion to Kenya mortgage refinance company for enhancement of the company's capital, as well as for own lending to primary mortgage lenders. Kenya shilling 8.7 billion for construction of affordable housing units, as well as Kenya shilling 1.2 billion for construction of social housing units. Mr. Speaker, to support the Nairobi Metropolitan Services in reversing urban indignity in Nairobi County, Kenya shilling 200 million has been recommended for the Nairobi Metropolitan Services Improvement Project, and Kenya shilling 118.7 million for construction of footbridges. Other key allocations of the housing, urban development, and public park sector include Kenya shilling 5.9 billion for the Kenyan Informal Settlement Development Project 2, Kenya shilling 700 million for construction of markets, Kenya shilling 1 billion for maintenance of government pool houses, Kenya shilling 1.1 billion for the construction of housing unit for the National Police and, and Kenya Prison, Kenya shilling 700 million for the Kenya Urban Program. In addition, Mr. Speaker, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya shilling 1.2 billion to support the Nairobi Bus Rapid Transport Project to offer an efficient and time-saving public transport. Mr. Speaker, implementation of the appropriate policies coupled with enhanced investments in the manufacturing sector has created a conducive business environment to support and protect local industries, generation of jobs, and improve, improve livelihoods. Mr. Speaker, 
To further promote local industries, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya shilling 10.1 billion under the various implement implementing ministries, departments, and agencies. Out of these, Kenya shilling 1 billion will go to the credit guarantee scheme to, en to enhance access to affordable credit by micro, small, and medium enterprises in the manufacturing sector. And Kenya shilling 626 million for provision of finances to micro, small, and medium enterprises through the Kenya industrial estate. In addition, Mr. Speaker, I have proposed Kenya Shilling 2.6 billion for Dongokundu Special Economic Zone, Kenya Shilling 295 million for the development of the Special Economic Zone, Textile Park in Naivasha, Kenaine Leather Industry Park, and Adi River Textile Hub, Kenya Shilling 50 million for the Freeport and Industrial Park Special Economic Zone in Mombasa. Other proposed allocations include Kenya Shilling 410.4 million for the modernization of river tax and Kenya Shilling 3 billion for supporting access to finance and enterprise recovery. Mr. Speaker, in order to maximize the benefits from our cash crop, the government will, further in, will, will make further investment towards the revival and enhancement of output. In this respect, Mr. Speaker, I propose an allocation of Kenya Shilling 212.1 million for modernization of cooperative coastal engineers and a further Kenya Shilling 250 million for cotton industry revitalization. Mr. Speaker, to equip our youths with essential training and internship opportunities, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya Shilling 1.3 billion for the Kenya Industrial and Entrepreneurial Entrepreneurship Project. Kenya Shilling 2.1 billion for the Kenya Youth Employment and Opportunities Project. Kenya Shilling 500 million for industrial research laboratories. Kenya Shilling 200 million for constituency industrial development centers. Mr. Speaker, as part of the Big Four agenda, the government is implementing measures and interventions to achieve food and nutrition security for all Kenyans. These measures include supporting large-scale production of staple food, expanding irrigation schemes, increasing access to agricultural inputs, and supporting smallholder farmers to sustainably produce and market various commodities. To further support programs under this pillar, I propose an allocation of Kenya Shilling for 46.7 billion in this budget. Out of this, Kenya Shilling 4.2 billion will go to the National Agricultural and Rural Inclusivity Project, Kenya Shilling 1.7 billion for the Kenya Seed Oil Enhancement project, uh, project, Program, Kenya Shilling 1.9 billion has been proposed for the emergency locust response, Kenya Shilling 1.5 billion for the National Value Chain Support Program, Kenya Shilling 1.1 billion for the Agricultural Sector Development Support Program 2, Kenya Shilling 1.5 billion for the Small Scale Irrigation and Value Addition Project, and Kenya Shilling 690 million for Food Security and Crop Diversification Project. Mr. Speaker, the government will further set aside Kenya Shilling 2.7 billion for fertilizer subsidy to cushion farmers during the short range from October to December 2022. This is in addition to the Kenya Shilling 3 billion allocated in the financial 2021-2022. Mr. Speaker, to improve livestock production, I propose Kenya Shilling 500 million for free disease hold, holding ground in Lamu. I also propose Kenya Shilling 1.7 billion for the Kenya Livestock Commercialization Program and Kenya Shilling 121 million for livestock production under the Big 4 initiative. Mr. Speaker, to promote sustainable utilization of the blue econ economy resources, I have proposed an allocation of 1.9 billion for the aquaculture business development project. Kenya Shilling 2.8 billion for Kenya marine fisheries and socioeconomic development project. Kenya Shilling 1.3 billion for exploitation of living resources under the blue economy. Kenya Shilling 1 billion for construction of fish processing plant in Lamu. Kenya Shilling 270 million for coastal fisheries infrastructure development. Kenya Shilling 210 million for rehabilitation of fish landing sites in Lake Victoria. Kenya Shilling 204 million for aquaculture technology development and innovation transfers, and Kenya Shilling 126.3 million for the development of the Blue Economy Initiative. Mr. Speaker, in order, in order to increase ag agricultural production and enhance resilience to climate change risk in targeted smallholder farming and pastoral communities in Kenya, I have set aside Kenya Shilling 147 million for the Climate Smart Agricultural Productivity Project. Kenya Shilling 850 million to enhance drought resilience and sustainable livelihood. Kenya Shilling 178 million 
towards ending drought emergencies in Kenya. And in addition, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya shilling 421 million for the livestock and crop insurance scheme to reduce the vulnerabilities of Kenyan farmers to diseases and natural disasters. Mr. Speaker, to ensure legitimacy of land ownership, I have recommended Kenya shilling 1.1 billion for processing and registration of title deeds. Kenya shilling 769 million for digitization of land registries and Kenya shilling 130 million for construction of land registries. Mr. Speaker, other proposed allocations include Kenya shilling 90 million for revitalization of cotton industry, Kenya shilling 300 million for mitigation of four lami worms, Kenya shilling 200 million for establishment of liquid nitrogen plant, Kenya shilling 200 million towards the embryo transfer project, and Kenya shilling 250 million for construction and refurbishment of the Leather Science Institute. Mr. Speaker, having highlighted expenditures under the Economic Stimulus Program and the Big Four agenda initiatives, I now turn to other proposed areas of expenditure in this budget that will, that will support our path to sustainable and resilient economic recovery. Mr. Speaker, the government continues expanding critical infrastructure in roads, rails, air, and seaports to create an enabling environment for economic recovery and employment creation. Towards this, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya shilling 212.5 billion to support construction of roads and bridges, as well as their rehabilitation and maintenance. Mr. Speaker, the standard gauge railway has presented a modern and efficient transport system that is safe, comfortable, and affordable for passengers and freights to expand railway transport to the rest of the country. I have proposed Kenya Shilling 18.5 billion for development of the standard gauge railway, Kenya Shilling 1.1 billion for railways met metro lines, Kenya Shilling 439 million for rehabilitation of locomotives, and Kenya Shilling 264 million for development of ERP system for SGR. Mr. Speaker, to support production and rel of reliable and affordable energy, I propose a total of Kenya Shilling 91.5 billion, excluding the provision set aside under the Big Four Agenda Initiative. Out of this, Kenya Shilling 62.9 billion will cater for transmission and distribution of power. Kenya Shilling 18.5 billion for development of geothermal energy. Kenya Shilling 9.3 billion for electrification of public facilities. And Kenya Shilling 2 billion for development of nuclear energy as well as exploration and mining of coal. Mr. Speaker, the security of our nation remains paramount and must be maintained to safeguard the considerable development gains. For this reason, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya Shilling 317.8 billion to support operations of the National Police Service, Defense, and the National Intelligence Services. Mr. Speaker, the proposed allocations include Kenya Shilling 128.4 billion for defense, Kenya Shilling 46.4 billion for the National Intelligence Service, and Kenya Shilling 122.2 billion for police and prison service. Kenya Shilling 10.7 billion for leasing of police motor vehicles, and Kenya Shilling 1 billion for police modernization program. Kenya Shilling 1 billion for the national communication and surveillance system, and Kenya Shilling 335 million for the equipment of the National Forensic Laboratory. Mr. Speaker, other proposed allocations include Kenya Shilling 4.8 billion for medical insurance for the National Police Service and prison, Kenya Shilling 2.3 billion for the group personal insurance for the National Police Service and prisons, as well as Kenya Shilling 1 billion for the National Integrated Identity Management System. Mr. Speaker, we are committed to provide access to quality education for our children and youth. This will indeed facilitate realization of their full potential and enable them effectively contribute to the development of the country. The allocation and efficiency in spending on education has been increased to improve outcomes. As a result, access to education at all levels has improved remarkably as evidenced by the increased enrollment in the basic and tertiary institution. To further improve education outcomes, I propose a total of Kenya Shilling 544.4 billion to support programs in the education sector. Mr. Speaker, out of the proposed allocation, Kenya Shilling 12 billion will cater for free primary education, 
Kenya shilling 2.5 billion for recruitment of teachers, Kenya shilling 64.4 billion for free day secondary school ed education, including insurance under the NHI for secondary school students, Kenya shilling 5 billion for examination fees waiver for grade 6, class 8, and form 4 candidates, and Kenya shilling 1.96 billion for the, special, uh, for the school feeding program. In addition, Mr. Speaker, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya Shilling 1.2 billion for training of teachers on competency-based curriculum, and Kenya Shilling 310 million for the digital literacy program and ICT integration in our secondary schools. Mr. Speaker, to support transition from primary education to junior secondary school education under the competency-based curriculum, Kenya Shilling 4 billion has been set aside for the construction of classrooms to support school infrastructure development and ensure safe learning in our schools. I have proposed allocation of 2.8 billion for free, I mean for primary and secondary schools infrastructure, and Kenya Shilling 1.8 billion for construction and equipping of technical training institutes and vocational training centers. Further, Kenya Shilling 1.1 billion has been set aside for, to increase access and improve the quality of technical and vocational education and training programs under the East African uh, Skill Transformation and Regional Integration Project. Mr. Speaker, other proposed allocation in the education sector includes Kenya Shilling 294.7 billion to Teachers Service Commission, Kenya Shilling 91.2 billion for university education, Kenya Shilling 15.8 billion to the Higher Education Loans Board, Kenya Shilling 6.8 billion for Kenya Secondary School Education Quality Improvement Project, and Kenya Shilling 5.2 billion cap capitation for Tibet students. Further, Kenya Shilling 527 million has been set aside for technical vocational education training and entrepreneurship. Kenya Shilling 971 million for promotion of youth employment and vocational training, and Kenya Shilling 323 million for the National Research Fund. Mr. Speaker, unleashing the productive potential of people living in poverty involves the re removal of constraints through economic inclusion programs. In this respect, the government continues to support vulnerable groups through the social safety net program, uh, famously referred to as Inua Jamin. To continue protecting this vulnerable segment, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya Shilling 39.5 billion for social protection and affirmative actions in this budget. Mr. Speaker, out of this allocation, Kenya Shilling 17.5 billion will cater for cash transfers to elderly persons, Kenya Shilling 7.9 billion for orphans and vulnerable children, and Kenya Shilling 1.2 billion for persons living with severe disabilities. Mr. Speaker, the proposed allocation also includes Kenya Shilling 5.1 billion for the Kenya Hunger Safety Net Program, Kenya Shilling 500 million for the National Drought Emergency Fund, Kenya Shilling 2.6 billion for the Kenya Development Response to Displacement Impact Project, and Kenya Shilling 2.8 billion for the Kenya Social and Economic Inclusion Project. In addition, Kenya Shilling 933.8 million will go to the Child Welfare Society of Kenya, and Kenya Shilling 400 million for the Presidential Bursary for the Orphans, and Kenya Shilling 459 million for the National Development Fund for Persons Living with Disabilities. Mr. Speaker, we acknowledge and support the critical role that youth and women play in nation building. The need for full and equal, equal participation of youth and women across all spheres of the economy needs to be accelerated and sustained. To further empower the youth and support business owned by the youth, women and persons living with disabilities, I have recommended Kenya Shilling 13.1 billion for the National Youth Service, Kenya Shilling 2.2 billion for the Kenya Youth Empowerment and Opportunities Project, Kenya Shilling 175 million for the Youth Enterprise Fund, Development Fund, Kenya Shilling 170 million for the Women Enterprise Fund, and Kenya Shilling 92 million for the Youth Empowerment and Enterprise Fund. Mr. Speaker, to promote regional equity, reduce poverty, and enhance social development, I have proposed Kenya Shilling 44.3 billion for the national government Constituency Development Fund, Kenya Shilling 2.1 billion for the National Government Affirmative Action Fund, as well as Kenya Shilling 7.1 billion for the Equalization Fund to finance programs 
in the previously marginalized areas. Mr. Speaker, we recognize the great opportunities that digital technologies offer in various sectors of the economy. Efficiently deployed, digital technologies have strong potential to accelerate economic recovery and improve livelihoods at relatively low cost for sustainable and inclusive development. For this reason, we have proposed an allocation of Kenya Shilling 15.6 billion to fund initiatives in the information, communication, and technology sector. Specifically, this allocation includes Kenya Shilling 6, 620 million for government shared services. Mr. Speaker, the government is investing in the development of the Kwanzaa National Data Center and Smart City Facilities. This National Data Center was commissioned in July 2021 and is currently hosting client services, including government agencies, and is a platform for the acceleration of innovation, particularly among the youth in Kenya. We encourage all MDAs to take advantage of this modern facility. Mr. Speaker, to fast track the development of the Konza Techno Technopolis City, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya Shilling 5.2 billion for the horizontal infrastructure phase one, and Kenya Shilling 3.8 billion for Konza, Konza data center and smart city facilities. Mr. Speaker, other proposed allocations include Kenya Shilling 2.7 billion for maintenance and rehabilitation of last mile connectivity network, Kenya Shilling 1.2 billion for maintenance and rehabilitation of the national optic fiber backbone phase two expansion cable, and Kenya Shilling 1.4 billion for installation and commissioning of Eldoret and Adapal fiber optic cable. Mr. Speaker, to further support, support, support as sports development and tourism recovery, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya Shilling 15.8 billion for the Sports, Arts and Social Development Fund, Kenya Shilling 3.2 billion for the Tourism Fund, Kenya Shilling 1.8 billion for Tourism Promotion Fund, and Kenya Shilling 125 million for refurbishment of the regional stadium. Mr. Speaker, environment, environmental protection and access to adequate supply of clean water is fundamental for the achievement of the socioeconomic development envisioned by the Kenya Vision 2030. To expand access to clean and adequate water for domestic and agricultural use, I have proposed an allocation of Kenya Shilling 45.9 billion for water and sewerage infrastructure development, Kenya Shilling 16 billion for water resource management, and Kenya Shilling 9.8 billion for water storage and flood control. In addition, I have set aside Kenya Shilling 8.5 billion for irrigation and land reclamation and Kenya Shilling 2.1 billion for water harvesting and storage for irrigation. Mr. Speaker, in order to support environment and water conservation, I propose to set aside Kenya Shilling 10.2 billion for forest and water towers conservation, Kenya Shilling 3.1 billion for environment management and protection, Kenya Shilling 1.5 billion for meteorological services and Kenya Shilling 7 billion for wildlife conservation and management. Mr. Speaker, stronger institutions and effective policy implementation and management of resource improve service delivery, transparency, and accountability. We shall continue to seek better public service delivery by building and sustaining strong, efficient, and accountable institutions in order to enhance good governance and scale up our fight against corruption. I propose an allocation of Kenya Shilling 3.6 billion for the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, Kenya Shilling 3.4 billion for the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, Kenya Shilling 8.4 billion for the Criminal Investigation Department Services, and Kenya Shilling 6.4 billion for the Office of the Auditor General. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, to enhance the oversight and legislative role of Parliament and access to justice, I propose an allocation of Kenya Shilling. 50.2 billion to parliament and Kenya Shilling 18.9 billion to the judiciary. Mr. Speaker, in order to facilitate the 2022 general elections, we allocated Kenya Shilling, uh, allocated Kenya Shilling 22.9 billion in the current financial year 2021-2022. And I further propose an allocation of Kenya Shilling 21.7 billion in the financial year 2022-2023 to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Mr. Speaker, the county governments will receive a, pro a proposed allocation of Kenya Shilling 370 billion as equitable share in the financial year 
These represent 27.3% of the most recent audited and approved revenue raised nationally. Mr. Speaker, in addition to the equitable share of revenue raised nationally, the county governments will receive recommended conditional allocations amounting to Kenya shillings at 7.1 billion, bringing the total allocation of the county governments in the financial 2022-2023 to Kenya shilling 407 billion. Mr. Speaker, we also we have also complied with the High Court ruling on conditional grants to county government. In this regard, conditional grants have, have now been excluded from the Division of Revenue Bill 22, unlike in the case of last, year, last financial year. I note with appreciation that this House has unlocked the settlement on the county government uh, grant bills. This bill will provide a legal framework for transferring conditional grants to the county government, transfer of functions between uh, national county government. Mr. Speaker, in order to ensure that the process of transfer of functions between the national county government is clearly provided for in, in law, we are developing a legislation to operationalize Article 187 and 189 of the Constitution on Transfer of Functions and cooperation between the national and, and the county governments. The proposed legislative framework will provide transparency in the administration of intergovernmental transfers in respect of transfer functions and corporations between government. Once completed, the legislative proposal will be submitted to this Honorable House for consideration and approval. Mr. Speaker, in order to support county governments' efforts to enhance their own source revenue, the National Treasury has submitted the, national, the county government bill, revenue raising process a bill to this August House. The bill will regulate the manner in which counties introduce or vary fees and charges. Once passed, this legislation will address the problem of multiplicity of fees and charges within, the, within and across counties, in line with Article 2000, uh, 209, Subsection 5 of the Constitution. I call upon honorable members to consider and approve this bill in a bid to create a conducive environment for business and deal with the issue of multiplicity of fees and charges within the county government. Mr. Speaker, in order to support an implementation of the county government's own source revenue policy, the National Treasury is in collaboration with the Ministry of Land and Fiscal Planning, County Count Council of Governors, and other stakeholders have developed the National Rating Bill 2022 to replace the outdated valuation for Rating Act, CAP 266 and CAP 267. This bill, was submitted to this parliament in January 2022, and once enacted will guide valuation for rating and imposition of rates on uh, rentable property. Mr. Speaker, Kenya is a well-known mineral deposit. From the financial year 2016-17 and 2019-20, the government collected a total of Kenyan shilling 5.5 billion in royalties from extractive activities. This amount translates to an average of Kenyan shilling 1.4 billion annually. Although mineral royalties are currently being received from 15 counties, 91% of the payments are derived from extractive activities in only three counties, namely Kilifi, Kwale, and Kajado. Mr. Speaker, following a presidential directive, the National Treasury has since developed a draft framework which provides for mechanism for sharing of revenue from mineral royalties among the national government, county governments, and communities in line with section 183 of the Mining Act, 2016. The framework, which is currently being subject to the stakeholder consultation, will provide basis for ensuring that revenues raised from the mineral royalties trickle down to the county government and communities where mining is taking place. Mr. Speaker, in line with Article 204, Subsection 1 of the Constitution of Kenya, County governments have been allocated. Constitution of Kenya, county governments have been allocated Kenya shilling 7.1 billion and a equalization fund in the financial year 2022-23, which represents 0.55 percent of the most recent audited accounts of revenue uh, received. Mr. Speaker, following the High Court ruling on the petition number 272 of 2016 of 5th November 2019, uh, quashing the guidelines of administration of equalization fund and ensuring 
uh, ensuing disbandment of the fund's advisory board, all expenditures of the fund were stopped. To mitigate this, Mr. Speaker, the National Treasury, in collaboration with other stakeholders, developed the PFM uh, regulations 2021, which was approved by Parliament in October 2021. Mr. Speaker, following the appointment of the advisory board and establishment of the Secretary, it is expected that com completion of projects as identified under the first policy and the implementation of the programs in the second and subsequent policies will now be fast tracked. Mr. Speaker, continued delays in payment of pending bills to entities that provide goods and services to both national and county government have affected liquidity and operation of these entities. In a number of cases, this has led to closure of businesses affecting livelihoods of the suppliers. Though some progress was noted in the settlement of these pending bills by the national county government, we still have challenges where a number of suppliers are owed large amounts of money. In this regard, I direct count, uh, government ministries, departments and agencies, as well as the county governments, to clear all their pending bills by 30th June uh, 2022. In addition, we call upon all the MDAs and county governments to avoid accumulation of pending bills and ensure that payments are made as and when due. Mr. Speaker, I now want to highlight the tax policy measures for the financial 2022-23 budget, which are contained in the Finance Bill 2022. I will also highlight custom measures that Kenya will be presenting for consideration by the East African Community Ministers responsible for finance and economic affairs in the pre-budget consultation plan for May uh, this year. These custom measures will become effective from 1st July 2022. Mr. Speaker, the proposed measures contained in the Finance Bill 2022 are expected to generate an additional cash shilling 50.4 billion to the Exchequer for the financial 2022-2023 budget. Mr. Speaker, as well indicated in this statement, we consulted other partner states in the South African community, and Kenya was allowed to present its budget statement earlier than the other partner states. With regards to customs measures, we have evaluated various proposals that we intend to submit for consideration during the East African Community Pre-Budget Consultation by the EAC Ministers for Finance, which will be held later in May this year. The measures that will be agreed upon will be communicated through the EAC Gazette and implemented from 1st July uh, this year. Mr. Speaker, these measures are generally meant to promote our manufacturing sector and enhance our exports by making inputs and raw materials used in the manufacture of goods <clears throat> more affordable, hence lowering the cost of production. In addition, some of the measures are aimed at enhancing the competitiveness of locally manufactured goods <coughs> through protection from unfair competition by imported goods. Some of the custom measures are also geared towards protecting of critical sectors of our economy, like agriculture, from unfair competition occasioned by importation of products that can be produced by our gallant farmers. In cases where local production does not meet our demand, the government will ensure the deficit is met in an orderly manner that does not adversely affect our farmers. Mr. Speaker, I now turn to the proposed amendments under the Value Added Tax Act. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic and the ensuing socioeconomic implications on Kenyans continue to impose a heavy burden on our health sector. In this regard, I have proposed more incentives to the sector by exempting from VAT plant and machinery for use by manufacturers of pharmaceutical products. Mr. Speaker, the government has been progressively addressing the cost of health care in the country so as to expand access to quality and affordable health care services. To further reduce the health care cost, I propose to exempt from VAT medical oxygen supplied to registered hospitals, urine bags, adult diapers, artificial breasts, and colostomy or elastomy bags for medical use. Mr. Speaker, assembly of motor vehicles and manufacture of motor vehicle parts locally has gained traction. 
in order to encourage more investment, especially in the manufacture of passenger motor vehicles locally, I propose to exempt from VAT inputs and raw materials used in the manufacture of passenger motor vehicles. Additionally, I propose to exempt lo locally manufactured passenger motor vehicles from VAT. Mr. Speaker, charitable organizations play an important role of supporting the vulnerable members of the society. Currently, entities that make cash donations to charitable organizations that are registered under either the Societies Act or the Non-Governmental Organization Coordination Act are allowed to deduct the cash donations from their taxable income. However, entities that donate cash to charitable organizations that are not registered under the two acts are not allowed to deduct such donations from their taxable income. To address this challenge, I propose to amend the Income Tax Act to allow all entities that donate cash to charitable organizations to deduct the donations from their taxable income. Mr. Speaker, Kenya has witnessed significant growth in the use of financial directives, directives, including aging, features, and options. However, there is no provision in the Income Tax Act to, to charge the gains accruing from the financial directives to non-residents. To ensure equity and fairness, I propose to amend the Income Tax Act to provide for the taxation of, gain, taxation of gains accruing to the non-residents for the transaction involving financial directives in Kenya. Mr. Speaker, last year, the Income Tax Act was amended to replace the previously thin capitation rule for determining taxable income with a method that restricts interest based on a ratio of earning before interest, taxes, depreciation, and harmonization. In the amendment, microfinance institutions licensed under the Microfinance Act were omitted in the exclusion list of the application for the new rule. In this regard, I propose to amend the Income Tax Act to exclude microfinance institutions licensed under the Microfinance Act from the interest restrictions based on a ratio of earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization in determination of their taxable income. Mr. Speaker, next I will highlight the proposed amendment under the Excise uh, Duty Act. The Act provides for annual inflation adjustments of the specific duty rates on all uh, products. However, it has been observed that the adjustment may not al always be appropriate for some products, depending on the economic and social environment facing these products at that time. To address this, I propose to empower the Commissioner General of KRA to exclude from inflation adjustment such products after consideration of the prevailing economic circumstances facing, facing them. Mr. Speaker, last year, the Excise Duty Act was amended to introduce excess duty on all imported eggs. This was meant to protect local uh, producers of eggs, eggs. However, we have noted that the tax has adversely affected the hatching business as this is sufficient local capacity to supply all the required eggs for hatching. To address this situation, I propose to exempt from excise duty eggs from hatching imported by licensed hatcheries upon recommendation by the responsible cabinet secretary. Mr. Speaker, neutral spirit is an input for manufacture of pharmaceutical products. Manufacturers of pharmaceutical products, which are not subject to excise uh, duty, are entitled to a refund of the excise duty paid on the raw materials or inputs. The processing of such refunds takes time, hence creating cash flow challenges. To address this concern, I propose to exempt neutral spirit used by the registered pharmaceutical manufacturers upon approval of the Commissioner General of, of KRA from excise duty. Mr. Speaker, currently, locally assembled motor vehicles are exempt from excise duty. In order to ensure the same treatment for manufactured passenger motor vehicles, I propose to exempt from excise duty locally manufactured passenger motor vehicles. This is aimed at encouraging investment in this sector and enhancing competitiveness of locally manufactured passenger motor vehicles. Mr. Speaker, gambling, gaming, and alcohol addiction have become prevalent in our society. These habits are extremely addictive and can result in a variety of harmful repercussions, especially to the youth. Advertisements for alcoholic beverages, betting, and gaming contribute greatly to the promotion of these habits. To discourage the promotion of these products and activities, 
I propose to introduce exercise duty of 15% on fees charged by all television stations, print media, billboards, and radio stations for advertisements of these activities. Mr. Speaker, in the recent years, innovations in the tobacco industry have led to the introduction of new products beyond e-cigarettes. E these products continue to negatively affect the health of our citizens. The design of these products and the taxation regime makes them easily accessible to users, including the school children and the youth, thus leading to nicotine addiction and consequently uh, smoking and use of other drugs. In order to prevent these habits and make the liquid nicotine used in these devices less accessible to users, including the school children and the youth, I propose to ch charge to change the taxation regime for liquid nicotine from current shilling per unit to an excess duty of 10 shillings 70 per milliliter. Mr. Speaker, in the bill, I have also proposed to increase the specific rates of excess duty for a number of products by 10% to generate additional revenue for the government. Given the recent global increase in oil prices, I have excluded petroleum products from this increase. Mr. Speaker, I now turn to the proposed amendments under the Miscellaneous Fees and Levies Act. In order to promote manufacturing of pharmaceutical products, I propose to exempt inputs and raw materials imported by manufacturers of pharmaceutical products from payment of import declaration fees and railway development levy. This will encourage investments in the health sector and improve access to affordable health care services. Mr. Speaker, in order to support farmers who rear cows as well as pastoralist communities who depend on sale of hides and skin, I propose to reduce the export levy on the raw hides and skin from 80% or uh, US dollars 0.5 per kilogram to 50 cents or US dollars uh, 0.32 uh, per kilogram. Mr. Speaker, on the amendments to enhance tax administration procedures, Government agencies are expected to be sensitive and responsive to emerging customer needs. In this respect, the Kenya Revenue Authority has been on a journey of transformation to enhance customer-centric service delivery. In order to align the operation of the authorities with emerging trends, I propose to amend the Kenya Revenue Authority Act to change the name of the authority from Kenya Revenue Authority to Kenya Revenue Service. The change of the name is intended to rebrand the authority and transform its public image, thus enhance tax compliance through improved public relations and maintain a clear focus on taxpayers' needs. I have also proposed consequential amendments to other statutes which make reference to the name Kenya Revenue Authority and align them to the proposed new name. Mr. Speaker, we have noted that tax disputes take too long to conclude especially after judgments by the Tax Appeals Tribunal. In order to protect the disputed tax revenue, I propose to amend the Tax Appeals Tribunal Act 2013 to require a deposit of 50% of the disputed uh, tax revenue in a special account at the Central Bank of Kenya when the Tribunal makes a ruling in favor of the Commissioner General of KRA as the taxpayer proceeds to appeal the decision. I have also proposed that in case of the taxpayer in case the taxpayer receives judgment in his or her favor on final determination of the matter, the 50% deposit shall be refunded to the taxpayer within 30 days of the final determination of the matter by the courts. Mr. Speaker, the Tax Procedure Act empowers the Commissioner General KRA to issue direction to the land registrar, registrar to put a caveat on land or restriction on the transaction for taxpayers with tax areas. It is noted that the taxpayer may have other assets other than land which the commissioner can put caveat or restriction on transfer to secure and paid tax revenue. In this respect, I propose to amend the Tax Procedural Act to require registrars of ships, aircrafts, motor vehicles, and any other properties that may be used as security for unpaid taxes to restrict the disposal or transaction of these assets upon receipt of direction from the commissioner. Mr. Speaker, the Tax Procedures Act empowers the Commissioner General KRA to request for additional information from the taxpayers in order to facilitate determination of an objection 
on assessment tax. The Act does not specify the number of times that the Commissioner can request for such information on a particular case. This prolongs the determination of tax disputes as additional information can be requested severally and any request for additional information provides the Commissioner with additional 60 days to make a decision. In order to address this gap, I propose to amend the Act to require the Commissioner to issue a decision on objection by taxpayer within one cycle of 60 days from the date of receiving a valid objection by a taxpayer. Mr. Speaker, Kenya ratified and deposited the Multilateral Convention for Mutually Administrative Service Assistance in the tax matter with the Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information on Tax Matters in July 2020. Under this convention, Kenya is expected to exchange information on tax matters with tax jurisdictions that are members of the forum. In order to promote greater tax transparency among multinational enterprises, I propose to amend the Income Tax Act to require that multilateral enterprises which have been operational in Kenya to report the activities within Kenya and in other jurisdictions to the Commissioner General Kenya Revenue Authority. Mr. Speaker, the Statutory Instrument Act that became effective in 2013 provides for automatic expiry of the statutory instrument after 10 years from the date of their publication. In this respect, there are several tax-related re regulations issued in accordance with the Act as well as some that were issued prior to the enactment of the Act that will expire after the 10-year period. The expiry of this instrument will negatively affect tax administration and revenue collection. In this regard, I propose to amend the Statutory Instrument Act to exempt the tax-related regulations under the various tax laws from automatic expiry provided under the, under the Act. Mr. Speaker, this administration has implemented socioeconomic transformative programs and a devolved system of government that required enormous financial resources. At the same time, the country was confronted by some degree of security challenges, the twin global challenges of COVID-19 pandemic and climate change, and the desert locust invasion that impacted on food security. In the midst of all this, Mr. Speaker, the government has successfully maintained microeconomic stability, achieved growth, rate, growth rates above that of sub-Saharan African region, and improved welfare of Kenyans. In conclusion, therefore, Mr. Speaker, our sustained investments since 2013 have significantly transformed our economy and strengthened our resilience. Encouraged by this, our economy has bounced back, giving our people incredible optimism, even in the situation of extreme challenges. Mr. Speaker, we are proud of our socioeconomic achievement and seek to sustain high economic growth so as to improve the welfare of our people. Considering the envisaged development agenda and the limited fiscal space, we have carefully balanced the difficult choices in resource allocation in order to finance the highest priorities that will propel this country to a greater heights of prosperity. I am confident that we have made the right decisions that will accelerate the pace of our economic growth. At this point, Mr. Speaker, I wish to thank His Excellency the President, Honorable Uru Kenyatta, for his leadership and guidance, which has transformed this country into a regional economic hub. I also thank I also thank my fellow cabinet secretaries, the principal, respective principal secretaries, and various accounting officers and staff in all government, ministries, departments, and agencies for their support and contribution to the financial year 2022-2023 budget. Mr. Speaker, I also express gratitude to Kenyans for their rich and diverse contributions, proposals, and suggestions that help us to finalize this budget. My appreciation goes to, uh, first to you, Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, and your counterpart in Senate, the majority and minority leaders, and the entire House leadership, including the respective clerks, for overseeing the approval process of the budget estimates for the financial 2022-23 and the related document. Second, to the Honorable Members of the Budget and Appropriation Committee, the Finance and Budget Planning Committee, and all other departmental committees of this House, as, as, as well as the staff of Parliamentary Budget Office, for their constructive inputs during the approval process of the budget. Third, I recognize and appreciate the management and staff of the National Treasury 
who have worked tirelessly for long hours to ensure that these budget and supporting documents were prepared within new timelines to enable the presentation of this budget in April, thus paving way for the, general, for the August general election. Fourth, the Kenya Revenue Authority, Central Bank of Kenya, Attorney General's Office, Commission on Revenue Allocation, Financial Sector Regulators, and the various agencies under the National Treasury, and the planning for their contribution and advice during the budget process. Fifth, my gratitude goes to our multilateral and bilateral development partners for their continued technical and financial support. Further, I thank the private sector for their sustained contribution to the growth of our economy. And sixth, I wish to appreciate the media and the non-state actors for their active engagement and participation in the financial 2022-2023 budget process. Mr. Speaker, allow me to once again thank all, all honorable members of the National Assembly and the Senate for their support in facilitating a legislative proposal supporting the government economic transformation agenda over the last 10 years. At this juncture, I wish honorable members the very best as they seek to renew their mandates with the electorates during the upcoming general election. My hope is that the electionary period will not distract us from the, our pursuit to solidify and sustain the economic growth trajectory we have realized over the years. Lastly, I note uh, list. Mr. Speaker, I remain immensely grateful to my family for their love, understanding, regular encouragement, and above all, their unfailing support as I stay at my demanding duties at the National Treasury and planning since my appointment to the docket. I thank you all, and may God bless you. The very last, Mr. Mr. Speaker, before I resume my seat, you recall that I've already submitted this House the budget estimates and the finance bill 2022, together with accompanying documents as required by the Public Finance Management Act 2012. Today, I further submit the following documents to this August House and request that you graciously uh, receive them. Honorable Speaker, this, the documents include the budget statement of the financial 